session today. And uh, all of you, of course, know Yogesh Sapkali. He is a person, he's our deputy editor, the person who we turn to in Money Life every time we need to buy anything electronic or we have any problems. So he's the right person to guide you. And he also handles all the helplines that we have in Money Life. So without further ado, hand it over to Yogesh. Good evening. Uh, the recent uh, ATM fraud episode. I mean, the number is mind-boggling. It's 30 million. That is what they say. Compromise ATM. So while writing some story on that episode and also doing my own research, what we found is that uh, the ATM hack. I mean, it's the card and the pin numbers have been compromised and it has been hacked. But where it is hacked? Where it originated? So while going through these slides, I will explain you where exactly that happened as per the estimate of RBI and the other people. So today we will stick with uh, three points. What is ATM and what is called as plastic money? How frauds take place? And what precautions you as a user of plastic money can take? So let's begin with the plastic money. All this uh, plastic money is a term loosely used for all the uh, cards. Let it be ATM card or your debit card or your credit card or there are the uh, prepaid cards. So all these plastic cards, hard plastic cards, they are called as plastic money. And they come in different form like ca cash cards are there. So as I told you, ATM, debit and credit cards, cash cards are commonly known as plastic money. So the basic feature what we should know about card, plastic card is, cards help us in reducing the cash dependency. And cards use magnetic strips. So here, this is the magnetic strip, if you can see. Some cards have these EMV chips. So this is a new standard developed by Europe, Visa and MasterCard. And some cards have this feature. So this is the NFC logo. That's a near field communication logo where you just need to swipe your card. I mean, instead of swiping it, you can just place it near the device and the transaction gets placed. <laughs> but what we found is these cards can be used as ATM to withdraw cash or at point of sales or at shopping sites. So this is how the ATM function. So when you go to withdraw cash from the ATM, so you insert your card here, you swipe your card in the ATM machine. So the ATM machine automatically dials to the processor and tamps with the consumer request. So it first identifies whether you are the authorized customer or you are the authorized user of this card. So it will ask you for a pin. It will identify your details and then it will ask you how much money you want to withdraw or what transaction you want to carry out. So it will send a request to the processor. So this processor that is the core data switch is there. So it receives the request and it passes on to the network. So what is network? So network is the uh, facilitator you can say, facilitator. It includes Visa, MasterCard and Rupee, that NPCI. So this is the switch. Then this switch, this network uh, facilitator sends this request to the bank. And this all this takes place within a flash of second, within milliseconds you can say. So here the transaction is authorized, approved and it, it sends a code back to the facilitator. The facilitator sends the code back to the processor and the processor sends back the code to the ATM. And there you get your money. You can withdraw your money or you can carry out your transaction. So while uh, in, uh, in the start, I told you that where the hack might have happened. So there are only two points where the hack could have happened. These are these points. But since Visa and MasterCard are much more uh, aware about their security and they are very strict and they have vigilance methods, so it might not happen here. So this is the only place where it might have happened. So here, hackers might have gained access to the data and they might have stole the information. Information means they just stole the uh, username, the card name on the card, the card number and possibly the PIN. But we are not sure whether they had stole the PIN also because the reported numbers of these transactions are very few. About seven, hardly 700 customers were affected. So this is how the ATM transaction takes place. 
सो प्लास्टिक मनी वॉज मीन टू रिड्यूस डिपेंडेंसी एज आई टोल्ड यू ऑन कैश और करेंसी एंड विद दिस एम मोस्ट ऑफ द कार्ड्स इश्यूड बाय बैंक टू अकाउंट होल्डर्स आर ए टी एम कम डेबिट कार्ड्स विच कैन बी यूज टू विदड्रॉ कैश फ्रॉम द ए टी एम्स एज वेल एज द सेम कार्ड कैन बी यूज फॉर शॉपिंग एट और द पॉइंट ऑफ सेल्स वॉट वी से सो एंड बट द मेन पॉइंट इज दैट ए टी एम और डेबिट कार्ड इंस्टेड ऑफ यूजिंग इट एट बोथ द प्लेसेज लाइक विदड्रॉइंग कैश फ्रॉम ए टी एम्स एंड यूजिंग इट एट द पॉइंट ऑफ सेल्स और मर्चेंट शॉप्स और एनी अदर प्लेसेज वॉट वी फाउंड इज दैट मोस्ट इंडियंस प्रेफर टू यूज द ए टी एम कम डेबिट कार्ड ओनली टू विदड्रॉ कैश एंड वी लव टू यूज क्रेडिट कार्ड्स फॉर शॉपिंग बट नॉट द ए टी एम कम डेबिट कार्ड्स सो दीज आर द ट्रेंड्स इन इंडिया and as i told you the near field uh, contactless card it, it can be called as contactless as well and this is the symbol that denotes is here you need to just hold the card near the device and there has to be certain distance maintained so maximum distance allowed is 4 cm so within 4 cm you can hold the nfc card and the transaction with a set limit of uh cash withdrawal or the transaction limit so it can get processed so let's say you want to uh, you want to buy something which cost about you 90 rupees or 100 rupees and the limit on the nfc card is 100 rupees per transaction so there you just need to put the card there and the transaction automatically gets processed but if you want to uh, carry out a transaction that is more than 100 rupees then there is a second type of authentication that is the it requires pin every country every card issuer has their own set limits some uh, bankers like icici has introduced these cards in india but since the uh, terminals are not there not much terminals are available at merchant places so this is not a popular one not at popular so the choice is us on to us what you want you want to use cash or plastic card in this picture i just counted approximate figure this is a 4 lakh rupees approximately so all this amount you can either carry all these currency bundles notes or you can just simply use a card again uh, i will say go for a plastic card why because instead of carrying the cash and taking the unnecessary risk plastic card is always safer plus you have a second factor authentication so you can use a pin that means if somebody has stolen your bag with a currency cash you have lost it you can't do anything about that you may go to the police file fir and blah 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 thing but your cash is lost so even if somebody stoles your uh, somebody takes away your card he may not be able to use it immediately unless and until he he have your pin also or he has also uh, steal your mobile also so that he can get the one time password so this is much more safer considered with the cash now uh, how this frauds of atm card frauds take place or atm or uh, a plastic card uh, frauds take place so this is just a small clip and the figure mentioned in this clip is just for the us it is 16 billion dollars this is the amount that has been lost in the frauds plastic card frauds and according to a nielsen report uh, for uh, 2015 through 2020 card fraud worldwide is expected to total can you guess any guess it's 183.29 billion dollars and by in in 2020 itself i mean the figure i told you about 2015 is uh, just 16 billion dollars by 2020 global card fraud will exceed 35.54 billion dollars this is a chart from nielsen report and according to that report losses from frauds on all credit debit and prepayment cards reached 21.84 million dollars in 2015 that is at 20 points 6% at the same time the volume the total volume of card transactions has fallen so it is now just about 7% and as i told you it is expected to reach 
31.67 billion dollars by 2020 but still the good news is that the fraud remains lower than the peak years in 1970s where it was too high compared with the total volume and the frauds it was too high in 1970s so how fraud takes place how uh, the gangster the criminals misuse your credit information or your plastic card let us see a short clip from abcnews.com that explains how the fraud happens the person who is explaining this is robert siciliano an online safety expert at intel robert siciliano is a cyber crime expert unfortunately when it comes to stealing credit card information it's as easy as swiping a card in any skimming device they can use the, those 16 digits over the phone to place a phone order they can use them online to plug it into a website or they can actually clone a card they can burn the information onto a blank atm or credit card and use that out in the wild still not afraid listen to this reformed credit card thief it's very easy and it's a lot of money so anything i wanted i would just go out and get for free using these cards dan de felipe is poacher turned gamekeeper somebody uh, turned my partner in and he turned me in then de felipe started working for the secret service teaching agents how to stop skimmers helping themselves to the data on our magnetic strips when the magnetic stripe was created identity theft was an issue and so the data was never properly encrypted once criminals figured it out obviously it has become a huge issue now this is the latest weapon in the fight against credit card crime this right here is the recently issued standard uh, chip and signature card it is supposed to eliminate the cloning okay so this was about us so what is the scene in india so in november 2013 rbi has asked all the banks to replace magnetic strip cards and implement the second factor authentication like the pin or one time uh, one time password but the problem with these things i will tell you the, about the problems uh, the deadline to replace magnetic cards with emv chips is 31st december 2018 so by on that day i mean from 1st january 2019 onwards every card will be just emv chip chip card chip and pin card so you cannot uh, carry out your tra transactions only with the card you will need a pin card pin also and it will be all secured chip cards not the magnetic stripe that can be skimmed anywhere as you have seen in the video so for that we require all the atms also to be equipped to handle the emv chips so RBI has mandated all the ATM service providers to upgrade all the ATMs to EMV standard by September 2017. This September 2017 is also important in another aspect. So I will explain you later on. Just remember September 2017 is the final date when all the ATMs should be upgraded to EMV. And right now banks are outsourcing many services including the ATMs. Uh, i mean the not just filling the cash but also the management of the complete atms uh, but we have no idea if any audit or forensic audit or any surprise checks are conducted by the banks or any other authority on these atms we have no idea and rare monitor monitoring of atm transactions anomaly why this is important this is important because monitoring and deten detecting anomaly transactions for instance let's say uh, consecutive withdrawal of cash from a single atm card from different places let's say you reside in mumbai normally so all your transactions take place in mumbai only so let's say somebody has skimmed your card duplicated it card and at on the same day if there are transactions happening in mumbai kanpur lucknow kolkata chennai so the bank should automatically be alerted that this card is probably getting misused because you can't reach all the places in a single day so these things has to be there this is a very crucial aspect but since this this type of uh, sur uh, surveillance requires a huge investment and there is no profit for bottom, uh, banks in this so they don't they don't have the system for monitoring in a real on real time basis bankers especially uh, psu bankers are more happy to oblige delhi in opening accounts jandan accounts we can say and giving the free rupee cards 
but nobody is bothered to educate the customer that how what security you have to maintain what you how what you have to do with the pin how you have to keep your card secured nobody is bothered anyway this is a quote from rbi stock official uh, mr mundra he was speaking at a seminar last month on cyber security and risk what he says in the name of technology adoption while banks are proactive in procuring various latest gadgets what we observe i mean this is what rbi observes across institutions is that the configuration of such devices are seldom given sufficient importance and left to the vendors at the same time he says vulnerabilities exist in hardware middleware software operating systems applications network devices and communication devices this is a very serious type of allegation you can say by an rbi top official mr mundra also said that banks are allowing customer information to be stored at the vendor's place vendor's facility without adequate safeguard this is happening day in and day out while banks are claiming that we don't have manpower i mean the skilled manpower we don't get engineers we don't get security experts how the vendors are able to get this can anybody guess vendors have all the manpower they want but the banks can't get any security expert or it experts for what reason i don't know and this also raises a big question whether the banks know what they get from their outsourced vendors including the quality of delivery and mr mundra has raised a very valid question in this so now move on to how you can i mean in this in this circumstances how you can protect your money especially if you are using a plastic card first thing is this is the keyboard of your atm machine change pin of your plastic cards i hope everybody in this change the pin regularly right have you changed your pin yes no never you are using the same pin which the bank had given to you yes. sir please change it right now after <laughs> and you you need to change your pin at the same time you need to change it regularly but again it is not quite easy most of us are reluctant to change pin the reason is we can't remember pins for everything it's very difficult but there are certain ways you can do that so let us see how you can change pin for the atms and credit cards and debit cards so this pin consists just four digits four numbers making it difficult to create another secure pin so that's why we stick with the pin that is given by the bank in the closed envelope so you can start with a original but memorable phrase for example i mean this is was money life's tagline money life knows money life says know what's coming so all of us has used the basic mobile phones the nokia 5110s okay so do you remember the keypad of that mobile it was just digits and every digit has some letter there okay so this is the keypad so use this keypad your memorable phrase and combining both these things now let's see this money life says no what's coming so i just use created 6592 using this memorable phrase so 6 stands for money life's m 5 stands for k 9 stands for what w and 2 for c you can create a similar pin right now right here how don't use what i had given you i had used the first letter see i had used m here then k you do the reverse you use e use w use s and g so it's a different pin you get and it is also secure it's easy to remember at the same time it is difficult to guess for somebody who has stolen your card now how do how to use atm in a secure manner so look for suspicious attachment on the machine i will explain this how the attachments are attached on the atm machines sir had seen that <laughs> what happens is all these criminals the gangsters they capture your information through atm skimming like we had seen the how they 
skim the ATM card, the magnetic strip. So the attachment is slightly come out. Like let's say this is the ATM machine, and if there is an attachment, so attachment will be slightly out, not in proportion with the other other components of the machine. So it will be slightly bigger one. So you have to check for that. and it may not be parallel with the entire system so if they are use the only skimmer so only the skimmer part will be coming out the portrait part would be there now before sliding your card into that machine look around if the area is safe and if there is anybody nearby who can see your pin while you are punching it and also you need to spend minimum time at the atm because if you want to just withdraw ca cash let's say if you want to withdraw 10000 so just take your card keep your card ready enter the atm insert your card take out swipe it out punch in the digits and just take the cash and come out so you shouldn't spend 10 minutes to do this transaction because the more time you spend inside the more you are calling for risk because there may be some unscrupulous element who may be watching for some prey and if they find that this person is taking so much time so they will watch the fun and they will even uh, rob you as soon as you come out uh sometimes what happens is we find that the card is get stuck inside the atm and some good looking young girl guy come and he says can i help you so we look at him we found that there is no, nothing suspicious because he's a it it guy maybe probably a good looking guy well dressed so you may be thinking that he's really genuine and he's helping me no he's a part of the gang who has put the strip there so that your card gets stuck inside so never take any help from bystander avoid using atms at night as it is quite risky unless and until there is a security but what we uh, often see is the security goes inside and just sleeps so there is no protection real protection available for you also uh, while entering the atm keep your card ready sometimes what happens we just carry our bags we enter the atm and then we take the bag out then open the chains and then search for the card where i had kept it maybe it's in my wallet or whether in some other pocket we fumble and then we spend 2 3 minutes in searching that card instead of doing all this keep the card in your hand ready and then enter the atm so you can finish your transaction fast and come out fast also and avoid using atms at isolated places so just see if there is enough light or enough people around the atm i mean the commuters should be there it should not be at a isolated place they were only you will go so there are chances that you may get robbed check your surroundings of the atm as i told you whether it's in well well lit area well surrounded by commuters people again while doing the transaction when you are entering your details when you are especially specifically when you are entering your pin so it is always helpful to cover with your other hand so let's say i am putting my pin so i will cover my the keyboard like this and then i will punch in my key so it is difficult for anybody to guess anybody to see at the same time it will not allow that to be captured by a hidden webcam there might be some small hidden help can so it might capture your pin so when you put your pin like this it will not be detected now let's see a video clip that shows how anybody can be duped at an atm again we have the same uh, roberto siciliano be aware that at any given point in time there could be a skimming device on the face of that atm this might sound stupid but check that there's nothing jiggling around that looks like it's been attached onto the front of the ATM Sao Paulo Brazil This looks is funny like just watch ATM. carefully Think again watch this cop pull off the false front that will harvest your credit card details when you think you're just withdrawing a little walking around money Also make sure that you cover up the actual keypad with your other hand as you punch in your pin code because there could be a camera anywhere recording your pin number Robert Siciliano has an ATM is garage when criminals set up a skim scam there's generally two parts of the scam one would be a small wireless camera here hidden behind this mirror this takes video footage of the 
keypad as you're punching in your pin code. In addition to the camera, of course, is the skimming device. The skimming device fits on the face of the ATM, so when you swipe your card through, it grabs the information off of the back of the magnetic strip. Even if a consumer has a chip card, it doesn't make a difference because all ATMs here in the US still use the magnetic strip. This is not only US. In India also, all the EMV chip cards have the magnetic strip on them. So what to do if you got duped? So our, uh, in August, RBI has issued a draft circular, but it is still in a draft phase. There are no, regula no regulations. What it says is zero liability if the fraud is not due to customer negligence and is reported to the bank in three working days. So it is important that in case you are duped, immediately you need to report it to the bank. A customer who fails to uh, falls to a fraud, phishing or entrapment call will also bear the loss only until it is reported to the bank. Any transaction after such report will be the liability of the bank. Neither the bank nor the customer is responsible for the fraud, but there is a four to seven days delay in reporting the transaction. The customer's liability will be limited to a transaction value or rupees 5000, whichever is lower. In case of a reporting delay beyond seven days, the customer's liability will be based on the bank's board approved policy. So these are just the draft guidelines. So what you as a customer has to do? Immediately report the incident to the bank. bank all the ATMs has the helpline number. So you have to immediately call the helpline, describe the incident, describe the location and note it down. If, if possible, take the screenshot from your mobile of the call record that you had called so and so number. This was the timing. Why this is important, I will tell you later. If I mean the banks are supposed to credit your money back within particular days, but if your money is not come back, then you have to write a letter and email to the branch manager of the ATM where the ATM is located. They have their jurisdiction. If you are using other bank ATM, then you will have to write to the other bank as well as your own branch branch manager saying this is the incident that took place and this is the call I had made, this is the complaint I had filed and request them to provide, uh, uh, preserve the video footage because most of the times, I mean most of the ATMs are having CCTV cameras, so they do record the video footage, I mean who is the person, but it gets erased after certain days, let's say 10 days or 15 days, so you have to immediately inform the bank this is the incident that took place on so and so time approximate, so you preserve the video footage, please preserve the video footage so that will help you identify the thief and if you don't get any response then you have to send them reminders after 15 days and if there is still no response then you have to take the complaint to the banking ombudsman now what more you can do yeah. ask banks to lower limits on your credit cards or even debit card, I mean, uh, even if you are a platinum customer and uh, you are never going to withdraw 50,000, 60,000 rupees, then why to have that limit at all? So request bank, please lower my limit, make it 10,000, 15,000 because I don't withdraw cash from my ATM. So withdraw that or, you, or same happens to the applicable to the credit card also. Banks are normally giving higher limit on credit card spend. But if you don't require that, then please get it reduced. So it will uh, lower your risk. Also check if your cards can be used only for the domestic purpose, I mean in, in India only, unless and until you are a frequent visitor overseas. Then opt for SMS and email alerts. This is most important because if something happens to your card, somebody has used, uh, duped you, then you will immediately get an alert. Regularly check your account statements. I mean, we are uh, watching that Robert Siciliano's video. So Robert's one statement was that in the US, uh, nine out of 10 customers don't bother to check even their account statements. This is what his finding was. I think it's 10 out of 10 people in India may not be scrutinizing their account statements on a regular basis. So regularly check your account statements. And if you find anything that is not the transaction is not done by you then immediately report it to the bank always be alert it will save you and your money now talking about that emv chips so emv chips are a new norm 
and uh, it is very difficult to copy or scheme that em with cheap uh, some people try to copy that i mean theoretically it is possible but it is possible only in a closed environment not out in the open i mean somebody just can't schemer and get the data copied it's not possible so in these circumstances what the criminals will do so they will try to steal your personal information through data breaches like what happened in this 30 million cards so it will be combined with your other information that you have you might have spread on the social media like facebook or twitter normally we do provide all our numbers on facebook some people are even openly put the facebook number please call me on this number so everything is available the criminals just have to look at the information so they will dig out all this information and then they will use the same information the biggest example is i mean just today's news is there uh, this pakistan embassy's official was caught by the agencies and he was carrying an aadhar card he is a pakistan embassy official how 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 he could get the aadhar and that aadhar was also on a different name so if somebody wants to create a duplicate of your records he just need to get your aadhar details just enough so i mean this is possibility i am not saying it will happen tomorrow but it is a possibility so while incidents of the plastic card related fraud will come down over the years criminal will shift their focus towards card not present like online transactions or online frauds so in this scenario bankers are required to monitor all the transactions all the systems but also keep a track of geo location to confirm the customers proximity to the point of sales like i said if you are in mumbai your normal location is mumbai and some transaction has taken place from let's say delhi but if you are not a frequent traveler to delhi so it should create an alert automatic alert to the bank that this customer's card is used at delhi and it should alert you also but it will take some time but bankers will be forced to do that because that is the only way they can reduce this incidents one more point is the standard online alerts some banks you know they have a restricted practice if the transactions only beyond a certain limit they do this mm -hmm. so they don't do the fraudster what normally does is he first puts a very small money transaction to check whether any alerts are on then he gets emboldened Uh, this is this practice is followed by mostly uh, PSU banks, but private banks they inform you all transactions. Just ask them to uh, send you alert, or otherwise. Uh, what I my suggestion is, money guy should highlight this to authorities. See, this one rupee, say hundred rupees or thousand rupees. It's not going to make a difference. The forester is going to. Test the waters first, and then take it forward. We 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 sent a presentation to the RBI on this, but there is no response from RBI on this because we wanted that uh, I mean ATM tra transaction charges as well as the alert charges. What they are charging fifty rupees per quarter or sixty rupees a year. So we sent them a representation. I mean at least give the details how many alerts you are sending. But b the biggest thing is surprise is that RBI itself has made it mandatory for banks to send transaction alerts to consumers. That is also free of cost. And immediately they did this thing. They allowed banks to charge. anyway uh, coming back to this uh, plastic cards so as i told you that uh, real time monitoring by banks to prevent frauds is a huge investment and it doesn't add to the banks uh, bottom line it is only expenditure so banks are not interested maybe except few i mean also the uh, expenses are so huge that very few banks in india would be able to afford that because it's a real time monitoring of all customers all transactions it's a very huge thing so like the emv uh, chip cards unless the regulator pushes for this real time monitoring part things will not be fall into place so to be safe and smart take all precautions while using plastic card that is the only way for you and that will save you and that will protect your hard earned thank you